Hey guys, how are you? Just had a really interesting conversation with someone in the auto industry. And this YouTube is about the auto industry, micro payments on the blockchain, and aspects of the control structure, uh, and how, do it, how corporations will continue to attempt to sustain their revenue curve with all new novel techniques as we move towards the uber world where you own nothing and everything is functional demand watch out for this phrase you're going to be hearing about functional demand quite a bit so how does this all tie into uh, crypto and the crypto space well here's an interesting thing first a little bit of a discussion about an older industry so the automotive industry Cars at the new point to be price competitive is a very big scaled industry with a lot of platform sharing, a lot that has to happen. In fact, they're not very profitable to sell new, except when you get to the super luxury where the margins are really, really high and the numbers low. Most, if you take an Audi, the A1s, A2s, S1s, 2s and 3s, um, are very, very marginal in terms of the profit they generate. So. Where do the companies make their money on these cars? They make their money on the service side uh, and sometimes in the secondhand car dealership. So the turning of stock from one uh, new owner to an eventual secondhand owner. It's often more profitable. Then you have the dealer network. The dealer network is obviously the interface between a car manufacturer and the eventual purchaser. Now they make money, uh, they also don't make much money um, in new car sales because by the time it gets to them to sell on, there's all the costs of these huge groups like let's just say VW Group for example. And they have to uh, make their money out of servicing and also used vehicles. Now, interesting point that I wasn't familiar with. One of the most highest profit margin aspects for uh, a dealer is the engine oil that they replace and charge uh, you for. Um, now, listen and think about this for a bit. If we're going towards an environment where we 50% electric cars and uh, reduced uh, combustion engines, uh, the engine oil drops, the parts, uh, particularly mechanical parts that wear and tear with all this action um, are reduced. Yes, there'll be things that go wrong with the battery cars as well, so they won't disappear. They will also be slightly restructured. But generally, the working parts um, of the mechanical aspect reduce a great deal. So there's a big squeeze on uh, dealers as we move into this uh, world. Now, here's another thing autonomous drivers in other words the google's plan and the cia dark states of eventually taking you out of being the decision maker in the vehicle that's going to mean less accidents that means less repairs less damage etc etc in the long run that doesn't mean no accidents for all those that'll jump in all of these things are happening less accidents less opportunity to get the car into the dealer network less things that have to be uh, fixed so these are all pressures on parts which is another big profit area uh, and the dealer network itself um, BMW became quite unpopular when they tried to get their i8s around to clients outside of the dealer network um, for reasons of, I expect, all the high end of cost. They actually had to buy a carbon fiber manufacturing company that was responsible for certain aspects. So the capital investment in bringing new tech and the price that you can sell that new tech for is very, very high. Um, and it's a scale business. Uh, so parking all of this, where does blockchain come into this and where does micropayments come into this? Well, here's the thing that's being discussed in automakers, the big automakers. They are looking at when you're buying a car, you purchase the basic vehicle and they will input all sorts of features and extras. In other words, they'll make most basic vehicles quite high spec vehicles. But if you can't afford the purchase price, you will buy them as basic vehicles and then these features such as let's say laser headlights it has a unit with normal headlights in it and also an embedded laser lights you only use the normal lights then there comes a really foggy day and you think damn we've got this feature we didn't pay for it but we can use it 
we can use it and we'll see better through the mist so you use that those laser lights for the first time and it cuts through the mist and you see better guess what those don't belong to you because you never paid for them so what now comes is you get that classic model of um, what I call the bar fridge in the hotel room concept you get micro payment charged for the rental use of that feature that was installed this way car makers instead of having to make so many different variants can make um, less variants and earn perpetual payments on use so what starts to happen is you own less and less of the car and more of it is being let to you this already happens when you're in a higher HP agreement, for example, in many, many instances, and that ensures rental extraction from you in the tertiary context. But here you are, you could pay cash for a basic car that comes standard with higher performance units, such as the air conditioner, for example. You could say, I'm not paying £3,000 for an aircon in my car. That's a ripoff. Um, I don't uh, agree with that. I'll wear a jersey, a jacket, etc., etc. What then happens is it comes installed with it, and every time you use it, you get charged. But hang on, how do you get charged? So this is where micro payments which can be taken down per second even of use are run off, wait for it, of course, blockchain. Blockchain and a token, which is unfortunately Bitcoin you lose on this fract, cheap and transactionally fast um, to be utilized. So I would be thinking right now, we're looking at uh, Ripple and Lumen moving quite strongly on the alts rally. Um, as I mentioned, I still feel that there is scope for BTC to sell off, but maybe the alts will continue to rally against them. That side, uh, that all put aside, you now have a token, whoever it may be, that you will be charged for per time of use at a certain time of use rate. And they may even get like utility companies where they can peak demand and low demand like the uber model all the tricks so if you just think about microsoft you used to be able to buy word and office you know with all the functions in it and you owned it forever well guess what you are now on a rent model this is how you get turned into a perpetuity of payments a perpetuity of payments allows the owner of the IP to continually to extract. You never own, you always renting. Imagine buying a car and it comes embedded with a bunch of Trojan elements that are negative net present value cash flows against you for the car companies. Why are they doing this? Well, um, as we scale up, they're facing the fact that they've got to retire diesel cars. In fact, diesel values have plummeted, and this has inflicted great damage on their dealer network, which are sitting with a second-hand uh, unit. And their values are plummeting, given all the release about how bad diesel fumes are. They've taken a whack. They've had to uh, resign that. There's new tests where they test uh, efficiency and performance that they have to comply with. They recognize um, that we're also seeing the cycle changing towards uh, hybrids and electric uh, vehicles, and they need to remain profitable while they do this change, plus a value of a, uh, of an, a future present value of income streams that you might say you will reject, but at some point when you really need it, you could end up using and paying. And they will, over a large portfolio of people, be able to have quite a predictive piece of income coming out of micropayments. In other words, they will become like um, the Visa and MasterCards transaction processors f and recipients of those transactions from you, where they could even levy cars. Uh, costs on you and those will be open-ended where they will predict how much out of all the various extras that they put in that they can in future get from you some people will never use the air conditioner some people will sometimes use the laser light sometimes some people will use this at some point you may find you need a feature um, and this also allows them to build lesser variations. So the manufacturing cost goes down and they do full spec on everything and you take everything else on loan. Now, here's an interesting dilemma. 
you have an accident, let's say you're not yet on an autonomous driving um, robot that rarely has an accident. I can't say never because it's happened. Um, and you prang and damage your headlight unit and you paid for normal uh, lights and the laser lights are in the same unit that you never purchased. So you actually have a partial ownership, pass, partially not yours concept. Let's say to replace that headlight unit is 3,000 euros and would have only been 1,500 with that which you bought. Who pays for the 1,500 on the bit that you never wanted that was put in your car anyway? Guess what? I have a sneaky suspicion this is going to be pushed onto you and your insurance companies, which will allow the financial extractors in the insurance industry to push up rates to insure unowned components, possibly even further at a premium. So here's how you get shafted, even on a vehicle that supposedly you paid cash for in full, you will be extracted against. How will it happen? You'll be extracted by use, functional demand. In other words, if you have a certain feature that you only use very rarely or you don't ever expect to use and then suddenly it happens, something that lights up if you get a flat tire and um, gives you a safety buffer zone and it's automated and does various things and features for you, you might even not own the jack. Who knows how car makers will slowly shrink wrap that which you're actually buying and let to you everything else that you may need so that they can create a perpetuity of potential micropayments which would be run off a wallet. You would have to establish a crypto wallet and you will be charged by use, much like a toll road, which I'm pretty sure will be embedded uh, for payments in your vehicle as well in the future. For those of you worried uh, about surveillance, that data of usage will be captured absolutely and you'll know where you are and what you're doing and when you're turning your aircon off and when you're not. More and more data will be attained on you by your oligarchical corporatocracy mega scaled car makers in terms of your use and the same will go for home and everything else in time and this is how blockchain will become part of an extraction mechanism against you for functional use. In other words, it is a Trojan horse in your home. It's like the hotel bar fridge coming into your home and in your car. Um, you'll be one of those moments where you're super thirsty and the nearest cafe is miles off and you'll be paying <laughs> 15 euro for that 375 mi micro bottle of water. Um, this is where we're going in terms of all things in the uh, blockchain and the micro payment chain uh, world. I'm going to be fascinated in watching the space and I expect it. Uh, you may recall my YouTube on the uh, desire of the control structure to get us out of property and turn us all into tenants and Vitalik Buterin's role in this um, in Ethereum. Uh, fascinating, fascinating indeed. This whole, oh wow, it's so cool. Uber is a taxi company without owning any cars. Airbnb is in a hotel company without having any rooms or hotels, etc. You should be like that too. Own nothing, rent everything. Um, and the long run capability, power and supreme control is part of what I call the technological oligarchical communism that will actually see you have ownership of next to nothing and many opportunities to have payments extracted for you. Initially, they'll be so small, you'll say, it's not a pee in the ocean. It's just a tick here or there. I'm not paying 0 0.01 Satoshis of a lumen to just have uh, five minutes of aircon or whatever the case may be until they start raising uh, those costs and still it gets higher until you start getting guilted out about your green footprint and how this tax is going to go towards the government and help make sure that we keep the air clean and that's going to do that and all the PR starts coming in once they get their foot in the door it never gets out the biggest lie in the world is a temporary tax and in this corporatocracy 
where they're looking for annuitized income. Remember, an annuitized income can always be valued. It's the basis of debt and paying of interest rates. It can always be valued. A net present value uh, mathematical calculation of a stream of payments in the future. If you have a big enough portfolio, you can virtually predict that income, even if it is on people's use of air cons, because you'll have southern hemisphere, northern hemisphere. Some people will be using the heater, some people their air conditioner, depending on where they're based, what cycle in the energy. In the same way, life companies can predict at what age generally the key people are going to die in a portfolio of hundreds of thousands without knowing exactly when you're going to die. Um, they can on a portfolio have a very, very accurate statistical model. Um, so anyway, uh, just a thought on micropayments and how it might come into the uh, auto industry. Also watch out for the Talpiot program. Um, one of the Israeli many uh, secret psyops tech aspects where they can actually control your car remotely a little bit of an interesting slightly sinister uh, topic that goes with all motor vehicles as well how with all this technology payment systems and computers and black boxes you truly are losing control of one of the final bastions of freedom remember getting that license remember getting that first drive remember that feeling of freedom going anywhere disappearing off grid your parents not knowing where you are well i'm afraid those days may indeed be coming to an end anyway fascinating thought and also the principle of usage on micro payments it'll have to be low cost and it'll have to be something that can be regular payments very very small um, i feel in utility this is a point bitcoin will have missed it might go store of value and something else hence why there is no maximalism there isn't one coin just like there wasn't in the end uh, the first search engine wasn't the only search engine um, and others emerged there wasn't one tech company there wasn't one internet company in the same way there will be space for a number of coins uh, to play a role um, in the blockchain but a lot of crap will have to be cleared out is in my view anyway just an interesting thought and share uh, after an interesting chat with somebody very close and high up in the big major automakers this is what's coming be ready to have a car you own with components, Trojan components that you will have to rent by functional demand when you deem the use. Uh, till next time, uh, I'll speak to you later.